So, my relapse story. I was uh, probably someone who doesn't drink alcohol for like three years when I first started out over 12 years ago now. And um, at that time I was married to a woman called Debbie and it was really difficult when, we, when I stopped drinking. I thought it would improve our relationship, um, but actually it made it worse. We, what I mean by that is when we were both drinking, our relationship seemed to be better than when I stopped, um, which is interesting. And um, yeah, it was really tough, really difficult. And after about three years in this uh, relationship, she asked me for a divorce and uh, I didn't deal with that very well. I didn't have the tools I had today and I just got on with life and just try to ignore the fact that the woman I'd loved for 19 years of my life had, uh, was leaving and I was leaving my home and I was leaving my son and everything. I just ignored it and just got on with life. Not very healthy. And I remember being in um, Malta a couple of months later and I saw Liza, my wife, today in uh, a poker room and she was massaging poker players and I just remember thinking, wow, this woman is so beautiful and something happened where I now understand that I had this belief and this story that I was going to be alone for the rest of my life, that all the best women in the world had been taken up, that I was ugly, that I was um, not worth anything, that I had baggage with my son Jude and that nobody would want me and I would just be lonely. And you have to remember like I'd been in a relationship for 20 years and I had this um, unhealthy psychological and this biological pull to put that right, to not be lonely anymore, right? Uh, so when I started dating Liza, there is this part of me that came up like a, uh, um, a mental map that I didn't have around what it's like to be dating. And I just remember thinking, wow, if I, uh, I'm not drinking, there's no way this woman is gonna wanna stay with me in a relationship, which at the time my inner child uh, would not allow that to happen, right? I had to make this relationship work because I was gonna be lonely forever, right? So I started drinking um, with the belief that she wouldn't like me if I uh, was sober. And like I said, I did not have a mental map for this. I didn't have a mental map for being divorced. I didn't have a mental map for um, these feelings that I was experiencing. It was really, really difficult. Um, then, uh, okay, then I started, uh, I started drinking and told myself that I would moderate because at this time, I'd already started writing about my sobriety. I'd already started telling people that I didn't drink and I was formulating my strategies and my philosophy. I can't remember if I had a company or not, but I definitely had a blog and people were definitely being inspired by my work. So I felt a responsibility to do something. So I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna nail this moderation thing. I'm just gonna drink moderately and I'm gonna uh, pivot my company and I'll be the guy who moderates. And I remember it probably, this whole experience went on for like a month. Um, in that month, I had one hangover. I remember it because I was taking Jude to watch The Lion King. And I remember being on the train being totally lacking in presence because I was just consumed by this hangover. Um, I wasn't sick, I was never sick in the whole month. There was just one, this one time that I had this hangover. Um, but I do remember drink driving in that month. I also remember um, that the, the speed at which I went from wanting and needing a drink every now and then when I was with Liza to wanting to drink every night happened really quickly, right? It was like my, my mind and my body could not, could not differentiate between um, just having a drink every now and then and needing it every day. My, once I started to drink, my body needed it every day, right? Um, and, and going through that same thing with sugar right now, like it's, it's um, 
I'm in Korea at the moment. There's lots of sweets here. If I was to have a sweet today, for example, I would want to have something every day. I would want to create a daily habit. It would become a reward that I would want every day. Uh, alcohol was uh, very much like that, you know? Um, so for me, once you come to Strive, it's going to be really difficult to moderate. Like, because what is moderation? Moderation is drinking when you're above the line, drinking when you are in self-energy, drinking when you're in a state of presence, right? And drinking for all the right reasons and none of the wrong reasons. Um, and if you can do that, great. In my personal opinion, that is really, really, really challenging to do for people who come to Strive. I don't want to say we're different because we have an addictive personality because I think everybody on this planet has an addictive personality. There's just something about the makeup of Strive is that when it comes to certain substances, we just can't play around with them. They're just like fire, right? How did I get back to drinking, um, uh, abstaining? My son helped me uh, just to realize, hey, dad, what are you doing? He just asked me some questions. Um, said, dad, there was no value in drinking. Why are you still drinking? And it just didn't sit well with me. Like it, it, it just, the knowledge and the truth about alcohol, this is where I think the Strive Method is really powerful, is when you learn the truth about alcohol, it doesn't just disappear, right? So you learn the truth about alcohol, as long as you do the Strive Method and you put in the work, then all of a sudden, once you start drinking again, you just feel way out of whack of integrity. And it takes up a lot of emotional real estate. Integrity to me is emotion, it's feeling, it's flow, right? And if you're constantly um, berating yourself internally or question yourself internally over whether you should be drinking or not, it's, it's, imagine how much energy it's consuming. And then how on earth can you be present for people if you've got this feeling and this thought in your mind all the time, right? So for me, it was a very easy decision to go back um, and to stop drinking again. Uh, would I ever relapse again in the future on alcohol? Um, I significantly doubt it. It would have to be something that would happen in my life that I'm not prepared for. Uh, so I tell you, one thing I've never experienced in my life is, is someone close to me dying, for example. Like how I would react if somebody died who was really close to me, I don't know. Um, but having some, a group like Strive around me, uh, when that type of thing happens, to go to, to say, hey, I need some help, is really important, you know? So that's my relapse story. Everybody will have one, but there's mine.